Uh, welcome back, everyone. I hope you've had a, a good day so far. I'm Tom Squire, and I'm a senior practitioner with the Lucy Faithful Foundation. And I'm going to give you something of a roller coaster tour of our Inform Plus and Inform programmes. Uh, with reference to the prevention framework that Donald introduced earlier today, these are tertiary prevention programmes. So these are after the fact, uh, and they are targeting adult internet offenders and adult family members. Um, so I'm going to provide you with some nuts and bolts information about the programme content and structure, uh, and I'll close with some remarks about why I think these interventions are, are effective and what their strengths are. But first I wanted to provide some context, uh, and in doing that I wanted to reflect upon the origins of these programmes, because I think in their origins give some clues as to kind of what shape they've taken at the current time. So to do that, we need to cast our minds back to 2002, or the early 2000s anyway. I don't know what you were doing then, but I was a probation officer ploughing a, a lonely furrow. I uh, made my way up from uh, Bristol to London. England had enjoyed a rather more successful World Cup campaign than they have just done just now. And of course, the Lucy Faithful Foundation set up the Stop It Now helpline, uh, and that started in 2002. Um, at the same time, the early 2000s were, I, I guess, heralded and preceded uh, by something of an exponential increase in the numbers of people coming to the attention of well, law enforcement agencies, the criminal justice system, child protection agencies, for the possession and distribution of indecent images of children. And I suppose that exponential <coughs> increase has been, uh, well, I suppose explained by or credited to, uh, well, the advent of digital technology, um, the widespread accessible uh, access to uh, the internet amongst the general population. And I suppose with reference to Richard's talk about situational crime prevention, really an exponential increase in the opportunities for these types of offences. So two things happened in those early 2000s, the helpline and an increase in this behaviour, with the result that staff on the helpline, and this has continued to this day, received a significant numbers of calls from people who were under investigation for internet-related offences, uh, and from their family members, predominantly partners, but also parents, siblings, concerned others, and professionals. So we received a significant number of these calls, and at, at risk of, I suppose, gross generalisation, uh, I was reflecting upon what the shared characteristics of those callers might be. And three things came to mind. Uh, so one was that they were all calling at a time of, well, really very profound crisis for them, be that the offender, or be that for the family member or the concerned other with uh, very few people to whom they could talk about these issues. Secondly, their, I suppose their, their crisis, if you like, their concerns were matched by their motivation and their desire to receive information uh, about the subject of internet offending uh, so that they could start, well, continue actually, to, to, to think about that behaviour and what their future might look like, whether that's the offender themselves or their family members. And the third thing, in combination with those two, was really at a time of uncertainty. And the uncertainty, well, reflected the fact that they were under investigation, so they didn't know when that investigation might end. Uh, they didn't know what the outcome of that investigation might be. And for the concerned others, the family members, they didn't know the extent of the harmful or abusive sexual behaviour. And, of course, nor did we on the helpline, by the way, so uh, we, we were only as good, if you like, or only able to respond to the information that we were given by the people calling us because they're still under investigation. And in response to those needs in that specific context, the organisation uh, set up and uh, um, kind of wrote, I suppose, and, and developed the Inform and Inform Plus programmes. And these were designed as... Uh, short-term, focused, psychoeducational programmes in response to that particular context and those particular needs. And we've heard a little bit about psychoeducation today. My understanding is, and I guess some of you know, may know better than me, but it, uh, it comes from the mental health field and the idea of providing information in a skillful, collaborative way with individuals who might suffer from mental illness or their family members so that they are empowered to understand their illness and to, uh, and to take responsibility for it to a certain degree, but be better placed to manage it and think about managing it in the future. And that struck me as kind of an exact analogy of what we're trying to do in these programmes with Inform Plus and Inform. So to work collaboratively with people who contact us to provide with inf information so that they're then better placed to take responsibility for their future and, of course, better placed to uh, not re-offend and 
so that the children with whom they may be in contact are, uh, well, are, are, are less at risk of sexual harm. So these are short-term psychoeducational programs. That's my introductory comments. I want to move on to kind of the nuts and bolts of, of what these programs actually look like. So the INFORM program, as I've mentioned, it's for partners, relatives, friends of someone who's accessed indecent images of children online. Uh, predominantly people refer themselves via the Stop It Now helpline, but increasingly we have referrals from other agencies such as children's services. Attendance is voluntary and a, we ask for a donation to the cost of the program as well. In terms of their structure, well everyone would be offered, wherever it's practical, uh, an, an individual meeting beforehand. Sometimes this might take the form of an extended telephone conversation, but ideally the chance to meet with us, for us to meet with them, to talk about their situation, to form a view as to whether the INFORM programme is a, a helpful step forward for them at this time, to think about, from our point of view, whether that individual might be able to function in a group setting, uh, and also, of course, to reflect upon the practicalities of attending a group that's usually in the evening. So, of course, many people might have childcare responsibilities or other commitments. So both this programme and the Inform Plus programme are available on an individual basis, in which case they're usually delivered in the daytime. So, max six group members, one or two group facilitators, and uh, available on an individual basis. And the content, I hope as I've indicated, well... It's about providing them with information rather than pressing them for what they already know or what they thought about their partner's behaviour. So we have discussions around internet offending, the, the facts and the myths. We provide them with information about the criminal justice system, so what the court process might look like, what the outcomes from court might look like, uh, what the uh, requirements of the sex offenders register, register is. We have discussions about what might motivate offenders. Uh, how is it that their loved one ended up making these cho choices and behaving in this way? And I suppose we're encouraging them to reflect about what needs that might have been meeting for that person. And we move on to think about risk management and strategies for the future. And of course that's both with respect to the internet and online activities, but also it's about them protecting children from sexual harm with whom Either, uh, well, either the offender may still have some contact uh, to some degree. But of course we know the children themselves will have been emotionally harmed by the fact of the police investigation. So it's also about giving families and, and, uh, and, and parents and carers the chance to think about actually how to respond to children's questions and what their needs might be. Which taps into the last point there, really about communication and support. So the INFORM programme is a supportive setting, a space where people can talk about things that they might not be able to talk about elsewhere. And we hope that having done that, they're then in a better place to be resilient within their own personal lives and to answer what any questions uh, uh, they might be expected to answer or to initiate any discussions that they might be expected to initiate with the children for whom they care. So that's the INFORM programme. Running alongside it as a, as a sister programme, if you like, is the Inform Plus programme. And so these programmes typically run from the same venue at the same time. And what we're trying to do is promote a shared language, if you like, a, a, to, to give people a framework within families that they can talk about these issues. So the Inform Plus programme is for men who've been arrested, cautioned or convicted of accessing indecent images of children online. So predominantly downloading, but sometimes we have men who've offended in different ways on the internet, uh, albeit in a sexual way, of course. Um, again, predominantly people refer themselves via the Stop It Now helpline, but we've had referrals from the probation service, from the police service, and again from children's services. I've had people contact me who uh, their investigation went nowhere and they had no further action taken against them because I guess there wasn't the criminal evidence for prosecution, but who've ended up perhaps in the family court arena or with child protection processes and who've then contacted us saying, I didn't receive any intervention at the time of the police investigation, I felt very on my own and now I'm wanting to do something so that I can demonstrate to others that I am thinking about my behaviour uh, responsibly and seriously and, uh, and yours is the only place that I've found that I can go to. So again, everyone attends on a voluntary basis, even if someone's been referred to us by an outside organisation. Because we're not pressing people for information about what they've done, because we're offering up frameworks and the opportunity for discussion, because others are there on a voluntary basis, we want people to feel that they're there on a voluntary basis, even if, I guess, they might have one arm behind their back because their partner wants them to be there or because another agency wants them to be there. And the programmes, this is, I guess, another innovation. My, my background as a probation officer... 
it never occurred to me that people might uh, uh, pay for their own treatment programs, but the Inform Plus and the Inform programs are self-funding. So the Inform Plus program subsidizes the Inform program to, uh, to a certain degree, but men pay uh, to attend the program themselves. So that's um, a little bit about kind of, uh, I, I suppose, kind of who it's for. In terms of structure, well, I won't go through all of this. To suffice to say, it's, it's longer than the Inform program, so it's 10 sessions. They're expected to do personal work between the sessions, so we provide them with questionnaires or frameworks to think about. Uh, but we don't collect those in. That's, just, that, that's for them to, uh, to undertake in their own time. We offer a post-program review, and uh, as I noted earlier, it's uh, available on an individual basis as well. The content I don't propose to dwell on. Those of you who are involved in the treatment of sex offenders, well, this will be kind of familiar fare. The difference is, is that our approach is much more light touch. We're not going around everyone in the group saying, how was this for you? Could you share that with the rest of the group? We don't know, actually, what they've done, so that that wouldn't feel kind of appropriate. We wouldn't be able to check it. They're also under investigation. That perhaps might feel slightly unethical to expect them to come in, as well as perhaps legally problematic, to come in and tell us everything when they haven't done that elsewhere. So the content's similar, but the approach is about us giving them information and having the chance to think about these issues rather than publicly to talk about how it was for them in terms of their offending. It's partly looking backwards, but it's also looking to the future and thinking about what changes they need to make. In brief, the story so far, this started off with a few groups each year in the southeast uh, a few years ago. I think we've been probably running the programmes for eight or nine years now. It's grown to hundreds of people attending these programmes each year, I guess about 200 people each year, uh, 20 programmes a year across four <coughs> different venues. We have plans for expansion, uh, we have an increased demand for our services, uh, and we've currently evaluated the programme, but I'm afraid I can't <coughs> share the findings with you yet because we're still crunching the data. The feedback from participants is um, almost without exception extremely positive. Uh, and sometimes really very touching and, and uh, inspiring as a worker. It feels a bit of a privilege to work with people who quite literally are knocking on our door very often to engage with these services. And, uh, and certainly that, that, that was, well, when I arrived at the foundation, that was extremely heartening for me to, uh, to have that opportunity. So my, my, my closing remarks really reflect upon what the potential strengths of the Inform and Inform Plus programmes might be. Well, it strikes me that there's something about the timeliness of the intervention. So this is responding to people at a time of crisis when they might feel that they've got nowhere else to go to talk about these issues. Um, they're very motivated to engage with our service. It strikes me that there's a strength in involving family members so that it's not just about the offender or not just about the protective partner. This is a collaborative approach for the whole family, if there is a whole family. Of course, sometimes it is about individuals approaching us, but there's the potential for family involvement. <coughs> It's also about the ongoing support offered via the Stop It Now helpline, so that the programme doesn't stand on its own. There's a, there's a context in which people self-refer to us, and of course they can continue to access that support thereafter. And it also strikes me that it ties in with literature about what we know in terms of effective interventions for sex offending. So cognitive behavioural approach, focused, structured, the risk-need model in terms of being responsive to kind of the level of need within the group... And, of course, uh, delivered by people uh, drawing upon the qualities that Arnon was talking about with kind of humanity, with empathy, with warmth, and, uh, uh, and the capacity to be directive at times as well in order to keep the group to task. So that's, that's the end of my roller coaster tour. I'm, I'm not sure whether I have some time for questions, but thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>